A lot of people who keep freshwater aquariums raise brine shrimp to give their fish live food. There are some problems, however, with brine shrimp. They have to be raised in salt water and feeding them to your fish adds salt to the tank. Also, they die in fresh water, so if they aren't eaten right away, they wind up polluting the tank. One popular alternative is Daphnia. Daphnia are raised in fresh water, so they don't add excess salt to the tank, and if they aren't eaten right away, they just keep happily swimming around until the fish get to them. They may even reproduce if they escape long enough, although that is unlikely. Also, brine shrimp are not natural prey for freshwater fish, but Daphnia are, being found in the same habitat. Moina are an even better alternative. Like Daphnia, Moina are also called water fleas, but are a separate, closely related genus. Moina are raised in the same way as Daphnia, but are only about one-third the size when fully grown, so adults can be eaten by even the smallest adult fish and all but the tiniest fry can eat the juveniles. They also grow more quickly, reproduce faster, and are more tolerant of a wider variety of conditions. Moina are usually purchased as eggs rather than as live cultures, but you shouldn't be intimidated by that. They can be hatched quite easily under the same conditions that they are raised under, but with round-the-clock lighting. Moina can be fed a variety of foods and will also consume any algae or microscopic critters which grow in the tank along with them. Some use flour, especially whole rice flour, but that's a bit messy as it contains a lot of indigestible matter. Others grow their own green water, which is mostly algae, and feed that to them. I use a combination of spirulina powder and yeast. Yeast is a more concentrated food and some use it exclusively, but you must be careful not to overfeed with yeast as too much yeast can cause the water to foul quickly, especially if you dissolve it in water first before adding it to the tank. Whatever food you feed them can either be dissolved first in water and then dumped in, or it can be sprinkled on the surface. The ideal temperature is in the same range as for tropical fish, but they will do quite well in temperatures anywhere from 65 to 88 degrees Fahrenheit. In my case, I started out with about 100 eggs, and within two days I saw movement. In 10 days, the hatchlings were fully grown and already reproducing. In two weeks, the second generation was reproducing, and the population was really starting to explode, with juveniles outnumbering adults by at least 7 to 1. In three weeks, they were well dispersed throughout the five-gallon tank and were starting to show signs of crowding. At this point, I began doing minor harvests by sucking them up with a turkey baster and squirting them directly into the tank, much to the delight of the fish. After a month, I was ready for my first major harvest and water change. I placed a funnel in a conveniently placed garbage disposal and lined it with a paper towel, being careful not to rip it. I unplugged the submersible heater in case the water level dropped to the point that it was no longer submerged. I then siphoned the water into the tunnel till the water level in the tank was down to about two inches. Then I refilled the tank with fresh water and plugged the heater back in. The moina in the funnel were dumped into a one gallon shallow plastic container which was filled with fresh water. Because this had concentrated debris and the water looked rather yellow, Dumping it directly into the tank seemed ill-advised. By shining a bright light against one side of the container, which caused the moina to flee to the other side, I got rid of the debris and the nasty-looking yellow water with a turkey baster while keeping most of the moina in the container. Now comes the feeding, surely the favorite part for the fish. As you can see, they had quite a feeding frenzy. Even the normally placid neon tetras began aggressively going after the moina, though not as aggressively as the zebra donios. Bless their little hearts. The fish all had their fill, rested a while, and then began feeding again. This was such a good harvest that two hours later there were still a few hundred stragglers, but by the end of the day the fish ate them as well. Once the stirred up debris had settled in the moina tank, I found that there were more left over than I thought, and in a week they are ready for another major harvest slash water change, with several minor harvests in the meantime. 